today I will present my PhD project and we can call it how do differentiated bird phenotype originate from Finland to Antarctica. Um, so as I said, I went to Finland in 2019 for conducting my master's thesis uh, with Suvi Roskanen and Antoine Steer and we decided to keep going this project uh, for a PhD project, which I began uh, in January 2020. And I will talk about this a bit more today with you. So first off, for beginning, what is a phenotype? So a phenotype can be defined as a set of observable characteristics of an individual resulting from the interaction of its genotype or the gene and the environment. It could be, for example, the eye color, the feather color, but also your size or your I don't know the mus muscle proportion of your of, of your body, some characteristic like this, but it may also concern more um, global characteristic like your gross weight, your longevity, and it seems that it could be impacted by your gene, but also your environment. But it also seems that um, the phys ph physiological, sorry, and molecular uh, mechanism that that allows this variation of your phenotype are poorly understood, but it seems that your ability of your cell to produce energy could also play a role for shaping this uh, phenotype. So how does it work? For creating energy, your cell needs oxygen and nutrients, and the cell is composed of many elements and the elements that allow to produce energy are called mitochondria and they are also called the powerhouse of the cell. So they can produce energy with oxygen and nutrients but uh, their way for producing energy is not 100% uh, efficient sorry, and they can also produce harmful byproducts. So this byproduct may uh, promote disease or aging. So you cannot produce uh, energy in an unlimited way. You are constrained by this creation of harmful byproducts. And it seems that uh, the produ production of energy in your cell may vary within an individual, for example, among the growth, but also between individuals. And this is the aim of my PhD, is to better understand uh, where this answer individual variation for producing energy in your cell originates and to have a better, better picture, how does it vary also within an individual through its life, uh, but also investigate how this variation in production in energy may affect your phenotype and, your, and the animal's life and if it could be something adaptative according to the environmental condition. So for this, I used two model species. The first one is the great tits, and I conducted the field work in Finland, especially in Turku. And the other model species is the, are the king penguin. So it's a king penguin population in Antarctica in French Southern territories. So, how do we monitor great tits? So the feedback was around Turku in this island, which is called Rusalo. And it's an island full of forest and full of pasturing birds. So first of all, how do we catch great tits or how can we monitor them? So we installed many nest boxes, more than 100 nest boxes. And we just checked them at the beginning of the breeding season, which is between April and let's say the end of June or mid July. And so we check the nest boxes and we can see according to the material in the nest, which species it is. And also with the egg size, if there is egg. And we target nest box with uh, grid tits inside. So here on the left, you can see the nest box, how it is, but also the nest with the grid tits eggs. And sometimes we can also see the female incubating already. So the purpose is to monitor the build nest evolution, to count the number of eggs, to see if they are already cold or already warm because the female is incubating. And uh, so we record everything. 
and we calculate the potential unchecked date. And when we expect the eggs to hatch, we check the nest to monitor the chicks. So here on the left, you can see the brood on the nest. And they are, I would say, two days old, so two days after hatching. And on the left, on the right, sorry, you can see it in my hand. So it's pretty little without feather. And it looks like a bit like a twingum. So at day two, we weight them and they are about, I would say three grams. But we also monitor them at different stage around the, among the growth. So on the left, you can see them at day seven, they already have a bit more feather and we also ring them. In the middle, it's a chicks about day 14. And we can, you can see behind the weight scale for weight, with weighting them, but also the scale for mothering the wing. And mothering the wing is really important to have a better picture of the body condition of the chicks. Are they too skin? Are they good or too big? But it's pretty, pretty rare to have them too big in the white um, condition. And on the right, you can see them um, about flat. Well, I would say, 15 or 16 days and they are already ready to fledge. So for taking the mitochondrial measurement and see how the cell may produce energy, we can use blood sample because for birds, uh, we have, um, how should I say it? You can have access to the mitochondrial in red blood cell in the blood. So for this, you just have to open the wing and you can take a blood sample uh, here on the corner. Sorry, I missed some vocabulary in English. Well, but you can take the blood a certain amount and then you can use this fresh blood uh, to this machine, which is called the Ouroboros machine. And so you need to centrifuge the blood and you will split the plasma and the red blood cell. And then you can put the red blood cell in two different chamber and they are um, hermetic. So then when you clock them, you can have specific uh, component, chemical components, and you can calculate how the, how it, the efficiency of the cell to produce energy. So the first part of this project was to determine what are the genetic versus the non-genetic determinants for this cell to producing energy. So it would, it was to, better understand is it more related to environmental condition like wearing condition or to the genetic background and the gene on the in the parents. And uh, for this, we realized a uh, brute size manipulation because we our prediction was that uh, we know that a brute size manipulation may impact the phenotype of the chicks, including metabolism components. So what is a brute size manipulation exactly? We had several nest boxes with several nests with, with different parents and different chicks. And the brood size manipulation um, concept is to switch the num So you switch some chicks between nests and then you can add some chicks or remove some chicks. And then you create enlarged brood or reduced brood. We also had some nests um, without this switching chicks just to be sure and to, uh, as a control nest. So in that way, for if you compare the cell efficiency, for example, of the blue chicks to produce energy to the green chicks, and perhaps you can find like, well, we expect to find different relation between if it was more, this variation is more related to the genetic components. So is it more related to the biological parents, or is it more related to the rearing parents and in that way in the rearing condition? And also when you enlarge the brood, you expect the parents to have a bit more difficulty to feed all, feed all of them. So it's also um, simulate um, a different feeding condition. So uh, we can more than check if it's more related to genetic or non-genetic determinant, but we can also see if it could be impacted by the feeding condition. Uh, the other way, part of my project uh, is to 
investigate what are the prenatal maternal effects. So what is the maternal effect? It's, it's defined by the fact that the phenotype of the chicks is not only related to its gene or its environment, but also by the environment of his, his or her, its mother. So um, for example, we know that the female deposits um, a certain amount of hormone in the eggs, and this uh, amount of hormone may vary. For example, according to environmental condition, it could be temperature, it could be also the laying sequences. The first egg won't have the same uh, amount of hormone that the last one. And um, we know that among these hormones, which are really important for the chick development, the thyroid hormone and the corticosterone hormone are really important. So for example, thyroid hormone may act on the skeleton development uh, and the corticosterone um, is also related to the stress response. And yeah, so for this experiment, we injected some hormone in the eggs of great tits. So for this, it's quite easy. You need to do um, really small hole in the egg, then you can inject um, the hormone solution with this kind of syringe. And you can um, just put some um, glue um, to make the, the egg like complete again. And um, so we did that two years ago and our injection did not impact the hatching success. So it was really successful. And what we could notice is that uh, with the corticosterone treatment, so we had more corticosterone uh, than naturally in, in, in the egg. So when there is a supplementation, it seems that the number of mitochondria in your cell are lower. So we could expect that because there was less mitochondria, it might be that the cell produce less energy than if there is no supplementation of corticosterone. Um, so the other part of this project is to use another species, a really distinct one, which is the king penguin. So for this, I will study a population in Crozet Island in French Southern, French Southern territories. And uh, this is a picture of the scientific station. So you can hear all the building there. And all around here are king penguin population on the beach. So there is quite a lot of bird. And why do we use this species? It's a really special species since the, well, first they are really far away and are facing different environmental condition. And the reproductive cycle is about 40 months. There is only one chick. Uh, the incubation is about 54 days. And there is many facing period for the parents and also for the chicks. And that's why we were interested in this species because we know that the, the amount of food is related and impacts the production of energy in the cell. So the important thing for us here is that we have two reproduction peaks for this species. So there is one in November and they are called early breeding. And uh, there is one in January and they are called late breeding. So this creation of two reproduction peaks is because the king penguins go on land to for breeding. They meet a partner and then they lay an egg. There is then some switch between the father and mother to fast and bring food to the chicks. And the thing is because one reproductive cycle is about 40 months, so it's about 40 months to have a chick that flesh, then you are delayed for the next breeding season. And that's why you have some early breeding pairs and late breeding pairs. So here you can notice that king penguins look a lot as upper penguins, but they are not exactly the same. And you can especially see it with the chicks. So here the chicks are super fluffy and brown and it's not like the upper penguins. So here the idea is to study the environmental effects which can impact the cell production of energy. 
And the idea is like those early and late chicks, um, which are not born in the same time, face different environmental condition. And we expect this different environmental condition to have an impact of on the cell production, on the production of energy in cells. So the idea is also to take blood sample on those chicks and to analyze them on the Ouroboros, the machine that I showed you before, and to find an explanation or how this different um, environmental condition like temperature, wind, or different in season may impact the cells. And at the end, um, we expect to better understand how this variation for producing energy may impact the survival of the bird. So if there is some variation, the idea is to investigate, is this variation adaptive? Could it bring something to the bird or it is not? How, in what context it could be adaptive and bring something, for example, increase the survival? So for this, the idea is to um, use this both the really distinct species and see how it could be adaptive in those species, but also to better understand if it could be for all the birds or only for this one. And uh, for this, we can use uh, survival indicators, for example, the growth rate, the mass or the size at fledging, because we know that for birds, the mass at fledging, uh, when they go out of the nest or on the beach for the king penguins and go to the sea, uh, impact the long-term survival. And the idea is also to check the survival itself. Um, do they survive from the experiment? Like in long-term, do they survive more if they have, do they have better chance to survive if they have better mitochondria and um, better efficiency to produce energy? Um, I really wish to you thanks all uh, collaboration that I could create through this PhD project and also all the partner for the program more purchase and this PhD co-total agreement. I also wish to thank my supervisor and collaborators who helped me a lot in this project. Thank you. <music>